This is Darwin to Jesus. Welcome back to the channel. Darwin to Jesus? Where have I heard that name before? It's not on the YouTubes. Oh right! He's one of those prolific Twitter theists who constantly says stupid shit in the form of memes and then is somehow surprised that only idiots take them seriously. Well, welcome to YouTube, buddy. I hope you have a good time. I mean, you won't, but I'm trying to pretend to be nice. What the f*** do you want from me? So the other day, a Christian asked me for advice on how to do apologetics when talking to atheists. Well, the gut reaction is, no, don't do it. There are people who love you, probably. They don't need you to come back bloodied and broken from a vicious mockery crit rolled every single time. But I suppose what you should do if you really want to do that is just ask them if they're interested in doing so. And if they say no, respect their wishes and just talk about something else. If they are truly interested, they'll come to you. I promise. As a former atheist who has spent hundreds of hours discussing God and Christianity with atheists. Former atheist, eh? So what is the betting he's one of those former atheists that either wasn't actually an atheist, you know, the hating God kind, or was one of those the worst kind of atheists that are just like the worst kind of Christian who has spent literally no time considering their own positions until they did one time and then immediately switch sides because they don't actually have a brain. Just a heavily tipexed piece of paper that says, insert opinion here. I thought I could make a video to share what I've learned. Well, there's your problem, isn't it? You thought you had learned. The two things that Twitter apologists can never do. No, what they do is say something stupid and if it catches heat, they say, sure are a lot of triggered people in the comments, instead of like figuring out where they might have fucked up because it seems in their minds that they never ever could. So here are six rules for doing apologetics with atheists. Cool, hopefully they're all super reasonable and don't end up crumbling in on themselves as you find you are completely incapable of representing atheists or atheism fairly or nothing like that. Because of course it won't, that never happens and is always fair and balanced and all that other shit. Rule number one, know what kind of atheist you're dealing with. Okay, seems fine. I mean, really, what you should do is know what person you are dealing with. Because there's not really such a thing as a kind of atheist. There are people who are atheists, and then they have various opinions and worldviews and thought processes. So just don't assume you know which you are dealing with or that there's only one kind. Because they will assume, rightly, that you are an idiot if you happen to do that. And the last thing you should do is let people know that you're a dumbass. You've got to hide that shit. Not every atheist is the same. Some are conservative, some are pleasant and friendly, and some are absolutely terrible. That's hilarious. Like seriously, way to just immediately demonstrate your massive bias. Even if you didn't mean to, what you said there was that the only good atheists, well, they must be conservative. The rest are obviously evil and cannot be trusted. But no, regardless of whatever political whatever a person is, they can still be perfectly worthless humans, as all humans are, regardless of opinions on literally anything. And that's just science. To categorize the spectrum of atheists, I've made an atheist tier list that explains the different types you're likely to encounter. Wait, 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 what the f***? So again, this starts out seeming reasonable until you like, look at it? And just there, at the top, the S tier atheists, they simply don't exist. What? Why? All right, let me guess, because an S tier atheist would be a Christian pretending to be an atheist who then immediately just agrees with everything you fucking say. I think Ray Comfort knows a few of them. And shit, your rank below that is also a thing that doesn't exist. Unicorn things are supposed to be rare, rare, rare things, but I just think it's a dumb status because unicorns don't fucking exist. So depending on how exactly you define that, you're gonna be saying a big chunk of atheists don't reel because you say so and list. I'll link that in the description. So he did and I did the look and it's exactly what you would expect. It's basically, only the type of atheist who is ready to blow Jesus is worth talking to, and the rest aren't actually interested in learning or knowing things. Like seriously, every single one below A cannot possibly be trying to figure shit out. But I'm sorry, just because you call someone an idiot for saying something demonstrably stupid, that doesn't mean that you don't care about facts. If anything, it's the opposite. 
Although the most interesting part of this is the top follow-up question. What would an S-tier atheist be? And the answer, of course, is one who's not a fucking atheist. What an absolute brainlet this guy is. <laughs> Knowing the kind of atheist you're dealing with is crucial so you don't waste your time. Uh, I guess, but it also depends on exactly what you're trying to achieve. I mean, if you go into every conversation assuming you are going to be right and that everyone will just immediately agree with you, sure, you're going to feel like everyone is wasting your time. Of course, missing the irony that an attitude like that is a waste of literally everyone's time. Rule number two, only engage with certain kinds of atheists. So that's just the same as rule one with somehow less steps, apparently. But yeah, like sure. There are certain types of people who aren't there to do anything but piss you off. But your little chart makes that basically all of them, as the top three effectively don't exist, or are so rare that they might as well not exist, which frankly any theist discussing earnestly, and not like a massive jackass, will know simply is not true. But if you do argue like an asshole, you'll find that everyone you meet is an asshole. Especially weirdly, if you tell them what they think. Those people are the worst kind of asshole, because they say, no, that's not what I think. What's wrong with you? And how dare they disagree with me when I'm always right? It's weird that theists like you would be so into self-fulfilling prophecies, eh? Once you understand the different types of atheists, you can recognize which type you're dealing with and use that discernment to choose who you do apologetics with. I like the fact that at no point you will, oh, I don't know, talk to them like they're an individual and learn about what they actually believe instead of categorizing them into a stupid list that will effectively make it so that you never talk to anyone. Also, according to this guy, your truth that is extremely convincing because of how right it is just isn't available to people who don't already believe it. Oh, what a love God yours is. Hate the sin, not the sin and not unless they argue with you when they deserve to burn in hell, apparently. You should only engage A, B, and maybe some high C tier atheists. So this one. Okay, first off, why am I having to put your content into your own video for you? These are just pictures. Put them in the fucking video. Don't rely on your audience to go out and look at things. Because in the vast majority of cases, they won't do that. Clicking buttons is effort. And also, people tend not to want to leave the platform they're currently engaging with. So yeah. Anyway, what exactly makes someone a high C tier as opposed to a low C tier? This is the description that you have given them. They are either this thing or they aren't that thing. And of course, they just want to argue because no one ever wants to argue to figure out what's going on. No, 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 they just hate God or some shit. Engaging with anyone below that will likely lead to frustration. Not if you have the right mindset. Seriously, this list could be similarly applied to theists, although I think it's a shit list that's not reflective of how people work. It would have to be way bigger in order to be accurate, and even then it would still fail to be useful. But people come at me all the time talking smack and telling me what I believe, and, well, I just ask them questions. What do you think I think? Where did you get that idea from? And things to that effect. And sure, a lot of the time they can act like smug assholes and never bother to actually ask me anything, but a lot of the time you can get them to think about what you said, even if they're unaware of it. Get that little critical thinking brain worm into their heads and maybe next time they'll be a little bit less of a tool. But you know how you will never achieve that? If you run away from someone because you decided that they're already not worth the effort, you will always lose the argument that you don't even try. To identify the atheist not worth talking to, look for red flags like loaded questions, demands for proof, insults, reliance on rhetoric and sophistry, or attempts to control the conversation. <laughs> I love the fact that you threw in demands of proof, because, you know, you know you don't have any. Well, you don't have any that isn't better explained by other means. So you can't engage with people asking for it, because then they will know too. F that. The others? Okay, fine. But then you don't get to use them either. And let's be fair, rhetoric and sophistry is all people like you have. No wonder you hate it when other people dare to use your tools. And finally, don't get so bitch sad about insults, you goddamn cock. I get insulted all the time. I don't care. Aside from when it's really lazy, that's truly insulting. When they don't even try to be clever about it. Come on. Instead, engage with atheists who are chill, ask fair questions, and avoid straw manning you. 
Translation, only talk to atheists who don't challenge you, who don't ask you hard questions, and don't point out how you aren't making the argument you think you are. Which is what a straw man is, when I say something stupid and you point that out. That's a straw man. Rule number three, don't expect them to change their mind. Expect? Sure, no one should expect people to be completely different after one interaction. But like I said before, if you aren't even going to try to engage with 90% of people, I don't know how you expect the ones that you do will be convinced by your obviously untrained arguments. If you don't talk to people who challenge you, I don't really understand how you expect to get any better at this shit since you're not going to know the things you're getting wrong. And the really polite people just aren't going to tell you. Atheists are often the most stubborn people you can witness to. I'm sure what he actually means isn't why do the people who hold a belief diametrically opposed to mine not agree with everything I say? They're just so stubborn. And of course at no point realising that he and his ilk are just as stubborn. Except it's not stubbornness to disagree with someone. It's just their f***ing opinions, dude. Not instantly changing their minds is okay. I don't expect you lot to stop being stupid overnight either. They reject God because they think they are God. Wow, I knew this was going to be bad, but it just fell off a cliff real fucking hard, didn't it? What the hell are you talking about? And the hypocrisy to boot. Eh, don't straw man us. Eh, that's bad. Oh, by the way, here's the biggest straw man that theists will ever fucking spout about atheists. I don't know. A single atheist who would claim to be any kind of deity. Apart from me, God of Whiskey, obviously. But that's a fucking joke, dipshit. And does that mean when you were this atheist from the before time who turned around to blow God, you thought you were a god? Well, then you were a fucking idiot, mate. Glad to see nothing's changed. So the idea that you might be right and they are wrong is not even a possibility to 99.99999% of them. Again, his list makes this meaningless because to this guy the good ones just don't exist. Forget the fact that in my experience most atheists would say they don't know whether there is a god, they are just unconvinced and thus could be convinced if you guys weren't so bad at this shit and deliberately make it so that we will never hear your oh so amazing arguments that are definitely real, they're just only for the people who already agree with us, basically. Don't expect them to change their minds. If their minds ever do change, it will likely be far in the future and you won't know about it. Wait, so do expect them to change their minds? Just don't expect it to be immediate. Well, fucking duh, I already said that shit. And made it way handsomer too. But Christ, if you people are expecting atheists to just immediately drop trout and present to Jesus after one conversation where you made a fool out of yourself for God, no wonder you seem to get so frustrated. It took me years to change my mind and become a Christian. I would love to see that timeline from I am literally a god to no wait, that guy over there is. I can only imagine it's a really stupid timeline full of plot holes and bizarre leaps in logic. You know, like the Bible. Rule number four, do not give evidence. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Rule number five. Don't. No, I'm kidding. Can you imagine? He does actually have more to say and it's really fucking stupid. But, you know. <laughs> this rule will surprise many Christians, but I mean it. Atheists don't care about evidence. They only ask for it to throw it back in your face and claim it's not evidence. Doesn't surprise me, but only because you obviously don't understand what's happening. The evidence your lot tend to give is either shit that doesn't prove anything or are things that have other, usually better explanations for them rather than God did it. So people who actually bother to look into that shit will in fact be able to throw it right back at you explaining how what you claim to prove your point obviously doesn't. No wonder he doesn't want people asking for proof when he's probably had that happen to him every single time that he thought he was providing it. A better man might, I don't know, figure out that maybe he's wrong, but not our guy. He just ignores it even harder.
Only give evidence to an atheist if they're your friend, you've established mutual respect, and you're in a private conversation. Oh god, yeah, don't do it somewhere public. Otherwise, you'll get the shit embarrassed out of you because of how wrong you'll definitely be. Also, how can you have any respect for any atheist when we have already established they are a bunch of shitheads, so... Ultimately, evidence isn't going to change anyone's mind because atheism is about rebellion, not evidence. Oh look, another straw man. Atheists change their mind based on good evidence all the time. I bet you just don't have any that doesn't scream some other answer way louder or just doesn't say anything at all. Rule number five, don't take anything personally. Good way to be full stop, but just a point. Don't expect someone you tell is going to hell and that you literally believe that and that it's a good thing not to think that maybe you're a bit of a dickhead. But to be fair, that is only because you are. Atheists will insult you, demean you, gaslight you, denigrate our Lord and more. Don't let it get to you. Don't take it personally. And whatever about the other ones, but gaslighting? I would love to see an example of that. I think what you mean is they will show you how you're wrong over and over and over again until you feel crazy. And that's not gaslighting. That's called you being wrong all the time. Maybe you should stop. Atheists love to get the better of Christians. So if you find yourself getting upset, take a break from the conversation. If this happens often, you should probably stop engaging with atheists. But never assume it's something you're doing. That would be stupid. They'll make a fool out of you and hurt your witness. If you're going to deal with atheists, you need very thick skin. Or you know, don't assume that just because I don't agree with you, I'm doing it specifically to upset you. I might actually believe the things I said instead of it being a fucking rebellion. Just a tip. Rule number six, know why you want to have the conversation. Honestly, I am not convinced that theists like you have any idea why they do what they do. I mean, if you'd have really thought why you did anything, you probably wouldn't believe in God. Got him. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six's channel, Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships, and PayPal to support directly. Finally, follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-